Hey everybody, this is Jen from Gar and Jen's Journey. Today I wanted to show you some surprises we have in the garden. So let's go take a walk. First of all, let's look at my giant sunflower. Isn't it a beauty? That thing is 14 foot tall. And the, the head is supposed to be about the size of a semi steering wheel or a little bit larger. It's not quite that big um, right now, but um, it's a beauty anyways. It's probably the size of a nice size dinner plate. Um, but yeah, it's 14 foot tall. It does have a couple of companions that are about eight foot tall. Um, but anyways, I'm really excited to see that uh, growing in the garden. And once it's starting to produce seed, um, I'll probably be cutting that head off and using it uh, to save seed. And then the, the smaller ones will let go for the birds. But uh, yeah, there's a bunch of bees on it right now just enjoying that wonderful giant sunflower. Okay, so the next uh, uh, place I wanted to show you was my uh, indeterminate tomato patch. Um, this is the one that I'm growing for the homestead. I'll show you the other one in a little bit. But these are all my indeterminate tomatoes that I have growing along uh, the fence of my dog run. Um, and it, it, the fence line is at least eight foot tall. So these have plenty of room to grow. Uh, these were planted late this year because like most of the nation, we're about five weeks behind. But um, I'm really excited because even though they were behind and they're not quite as tall yet as they would be normally this time of year, they're starting to set fruit. And uh, so I kind of wanted to show you what they look like. These right here are yellow pear tomatoes and they're starting to set fruit. Got all sorts of fruit going on. And I've had to prune them quite a bit um, as far as keeping the suckers off them and things like that. Because when you're growing indeterminates, a lot of times you want to do the single stem approach, which means you keep a centralized main stem going all the way up and you trim off all the suckers. That way it puts more energy into growing taller and growing more fruit. So I've had to prune quite a bit. Moving along, these are my pink bumblebee cherry tomatoes. Really love them. I grew them for the first time last year. Had lots and lots of fruit. I've got quite a few fruit that have set and some that are starting to turn colors. So they're doing really good. And then over here I have, this is my favorite plant so far this year. This is Barry's Crazy Cherry Tomato. And I don't know, can you see the trusses? The amount of flowers that go on each truss. I think um, the description said you get about 40 uh, tomatoes per truss if um, they're completely pollinated. So and I, another thing I noticed about th this um, plant is even after the plant shoots out the truss, um, you ha have to watch some of them because the trusses actually shoot out more, and I've trimmed most of them, but they shoot out more of a sucker along the end of the truss. So I actually have trimmed that back. <clears throat> so yeah, this is loaded with uh, uh, lots of uh, trusses on it. And then I'm starting to get some, uh, some tomatoes growing. So I'm excited about that. Another one that I grew this year for the first time, this is the golden nugget tomato. And I didn't know it when I planted it um, because sometimes descriptions aren't the best. This is actually a determinate tomato. And I thought it was an indeterminate, so I pruned it just like I pruned these guys, single stem approach all the way up. And then um, it quit growing. And uh, I didn't trim it, this just quit growing. Um, so that tells me that this is a determinate tomato. Um, so I've lost a lot of growth uh, potential because I trimmed everything off. But you can see I still have a lot of tomatoes there. Some of them I have turned already. These are all yellow tomatoes with the exception of the bumblebee. The bumblebees are um, classified as a red or pink tomato. Um, I can't have a lot of acidity. Um, it really makes me ill. So I planted a whole bunch of yellow tomatoes uh, to try this year 
to see which one I like best. Um, the Golden Nuggets, they have a great flavor, um, but with them being a determinant, that might be a strike against them because um, I don't have a lot of room to grow big bushy tomatoes. I need to be able to grow most of my garden vertically, which is why I do the indeterminate tomatoes. So Crazy Berry might win on this one, depending on how it tastes. All right, so these are my Roma tomatoes. And when I say I don't have room for bush style tomatoes, I'm not joking. I have 10 plants planted in here of the bush uh, determinate style tomatoes. These are all Romas and I planted them specifically for making sauce and diced tomatoes and things like that. But they take up a lot of room because they grow as giant bushes. But you can see I got a lot of fruit going on. A lot and some of those are huge. I believe I have the Amish paste variety. And so I'll be growing them again next year. Um, but yeah, I have a lot that are um, on here. And some of them are starting to turn color. Some of them I'm going to have to get rid of. Like the one there, it splits, got some disease. Um, but overall, I'm excited to see um, how these are doing. Okay, so this is my special tomato patch of indeterminate tomatoes that I am growing for seed. So, um, yeah, you can see there's lots of fruit on them. Lots and lots of fruit on them. And um, they're still growing really well. I'm gonna cut through here a little bit. See all that fruit on them. Exciting, exciting. So, and then I have uh, basil interplanted um, in uh, between all these tomatoes. Then in some spots I have some other herbs, but it's mostly basil. But, uh, yeah, this is Thai basil. And then I have opal basil. This is uh, either spicy dwarf or Greek. I can't remember which one because I grew both of them. I th to me, they're both really similar. So, that's the spicy basil. Um, but yeah, these are... Um, the variety is called orange peach tomato. So I'm guessing that they are an orange variety. Um, I don't have the picture in front of me, so I don't remember. Um, but yeah, these are being grown for seed. And the cool thing about uh, tomatoes and some other um, vegetables that you grow from seed, um, we actually are still able to use the fruit because the seeds in the part that you really don't eat anyway, or you could eat the seeds, but um, you're not going to be wasting the fruit by harvesting the seed. So I'm excited about that because um, we'll be able to use the fruit uh, for um, making tomato sauce, uh, diced tomatoes, things like that. So um, exciting to see how these go. One of the things that I wanted to show you um, when growing indeterminates, um, uh, M.I. Gardner did a great uh, video on how he single stems and ties up his indeterminate varieties on these uh, two inch furring strips. And he uses uh, elastic cording. And I've, I've tried that and to me it's a pain in the butt to use. Um, yeah, it gives, gives some give and it's stretchy and all that. But I went back to my uh, staple of choice, which is the plant Velcro. This works very well um, and it's reusable. The twine, not so much, but this is very reusable. And um, you don't have to tie it very tight. Uh, the plant still can move and it's not constricted or whatever. Um, but I love this Velcro stuff. I use it in my garden for um, not just the tomatoes, but uh, tying up squashes, uh, wayward beans, things like that. So yeah, that's another thing I wanted to show you is that I just use plant Velcro. You can find it at most big box stores that have a garden center. Um, uh, you can also find it at uh, like a Home Depot or Menards. I actually ordered mine online this year um, because I needed to get it right away and I wasn't going into town. So I actually ordered that from Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below um, of both the elastic cord that, that Luke so loves 
and then the velcro cord or the velcro strip that I like and you can choose which one you know works for you this is the other side of my Roma tomato area this is where my bean trellis is one of them I have quite a few and uh, yeah the Roma tomatoes this tall already and this is just one of the arms so I'm excited and then my tansy look at these beautiful flowers when they finally opened up bees love this thing anyways this is my blue hod bean um, this grew exponentially within just the last couple of days this thing has really filled out I have some nice sized um, beans on here already I'm really really excited so this is the blue hod These are my current tomatoes. I like growing them because they're kind of neat. Um, you see the tiny, tiny, very tiny tomatoes on here. I'm not sure if I'm going to grow them again next year just because they're a pain to take care of. Um, the, these are so tiny and delicate and they grow, trying to keep up with as many suckers and side shoots as these grow. Um, it's just a pain to deal with for me. Um, being the only one who tends the garden, you know, I have to choose my battles and I'm not sure if I'm going to battle this guy next year, even though it's a fun little tomato to grow. Another thing that's grown exponentially is my loofah. Um, that's this thing right here. This is all loofah. This right here is um, cucumber. But yeah, that's all loofah. And then I only had a couple of... Um, Oh, trium Trifano, I think is what it is. Trifano Violetto beans. I only had a couple seeds left because most of my beans got killed by the frost. So I grew the last that I had for seed. And they're doing really well. So I should get quite a few uh, beans where I can save the seed on those. So this is the look at the inside of the loofah the Trifano. So I haven't seen any um, loofahs growing yet. I'm not sure if we're going to get any or not because um, the weather has been so cold uh, comparatively and loofahs need warm weather. But the plant itself is very very healthy um, and I have quite a few flowers um, where the loofah should grow. Um, but we'll see um, if we'll get flowers or not. But the plant itself is doing really well. I'm really excited. And then on this side, this is Kentucky Wonder Pole Bean. And it's grown very, very well. And I've got uh, quite a few beans that are starting to grow on it. So a lot of things have happened in the last uh, week, basically. And then I'll show you my final surprise. Okay. So I have a giant head of cabbage forming there. I'm so excited about that. But um, you might be able to see what my surprise is, but you might not know it's a surprise. Uh, this is my fourth year growing a garden here. And every year I try growing watermelon because I love watermelon. I've never been able to get uh, melons forming on my plant. My plant didn't get very big. But this year, look at this. I saw these th today and about screamed. I have watermelon. These ones here, these are um, early moon beans. And the one that caught my eye was when I was over here and just looking at things and right there that's a black trail mountain, black mountain trail, whatever <laughs> watermelon right there and that's the one that caught my eye at first and then when I turned I noticed my other ones. So that was exciting, exciting surprise. And speaking of eggs, another surprise. I know I said these were the last ones, but again, look at that. Exciting. I've never been able to grow eggplant either. And I have a eggplant. And then look at the size of my onions. I've never been able to get onions to grow that big either. So yeah, this whole garden, um, even with losing quite a bit um, this year because of frost 
and the late weather. Um, the Lord has really, really, really blessed. Um, there's just so many blessings here between um, my my cabbages growing huge. I lost, if you remember from uh, earlier, this whole bed was planted with cabbages and broccoli and cauliflower, and I lost most of it to slugs. Um, you know, and so I planted in the empty spots. I planted the last two watermelon plants that I had left, and um, I gave it some good fertilizer and just prayed and. I'm just so so thankful um, these are broccoli I'm not really expecting anything I usually don't get broccoli but I might be pleasantly surprised with that too because these plants are just very very healthy and we'll see even if I don't get broccoli um, these the the leaves I am saving the leaves and dehydrating them um, also going to be canning them because the the brassica leaves and are very very good and healthy for you anyway so, yeah, so that is just uh, what's going on in my garden. Just some swinging around and showing you just, wow, this thing has just exploded in the last week. And I'm just so, so thankful. So, thank you for uh, watching my journey with me. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, um, subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated on my journey if you so desire. And I hope that wherever you are, that your day is wonderfully blessed. Bye, everybody.